In this video, we're going to review the concept of factoring, or at least factoring numbers and algebraic expressions. And this is kind of uh, the opposite of uh, multiplying factors together to get a product, okay? So it's like this idea of taking a product apart into its factor. So let's take a look here. It says factoring polynomials. You know, I, I write that this is the act of rewriting a number or algebraic expression as the product of prime factors. And remember, when we talk about prime, we mean uh, that uh, these are factors that only, their only factors are one in themselves, okay? So five would be considered a prime number just because we couldn't break it down any more than that. So when we talk about uh, factoring, say, a number here, you know, I give an instance of maybe factoring the number 75. We're just trying to break this down and write it as the product of prime factors. And so, well, what do I know about 75? You know, like, what are some factors of 75? Well, I always think of this as like three quarters or three twenty-fives here, but one thing that uh, comes along with factoring is always this idea of breaking it down as far as you can until you can't break it down anymore, this product of primes. So when I look at 3 times 25, I, I see that 3 is a prime number, but 25, this factor of 25 is not prime, it's composite. So I can break this down even further into 5 times 5. And so we could really look at 75 as being the product of 3, 5 and 5, and here are my prime factors where I've broken this down completely. And often it is the case that we write it as like 3 times 5 squared. We've got two factors of 5. But the idea is going to be that we're going to be looking at uh, factoring algebraic expressions using very much this same idea. So uh, the very first pattern we're going to look at in terms of factoring, and this is always kind of the first thing we do look for, is what we call a greatest common factor or a greatest common monomial or one term factor here. So I'm just going to write this as GCF. And this is something that I expect you guys to be able to check for every instance where we factor. But we say, hey, does every term have a GCF? So we're really looking for factors that all terms have in common. And one thing that I write here is this is kind of like the reverse of distribution, okay? Uh, so when I say try to factor these algebraic expressions below, let's take a look at letter A here and take a look at what I really mean. So first thing I want you to notice is that we've got a minus right here. And so it means that really this expression has two terms, this 14x to the fourth y squared, and then the other term is negative 16xy cubed. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the coefficients, always the coefficients in front, and just kind of scan this and say, you know, do they have anything in common? So like 14 and 16, are there any factors that they both have in common? Well, I kind of feel like they're both even. And so the biggest common factor, the greatest common factor that they have in common is 2. So I'm going to put a 2 out in front of my parentheses here. Remember, this is the reverse of distribution. We're kind of uh, cycling things out here. And so I'd say, well, they both have in common a 2. How about x's? So we're going to make our next stop at this x, you know, x to the fourth and x to the, technically the first, right? So how many x's could they both give? Well, they could both give uh, a single x here, so x to the first. And then the other part of this is y squared and y cubed. I see that they could both give two y's. So I'm going to put a y squared out in front. Now the way this works is because it's the opposite or the reverse of distribution, instead of multiplying these things through, we're kind of dividing this thing out in front out of the terms that were in here previously. So when you look at what's left, you know, what's my, my first term going to look like now? Well, you know, what is 14 divided by this 2? It would leave behind the other factor of 7. What's x to the fourth divided by x to the first? And if you remember here, x to the fourth divided by x to the first, the way that works is dividing two things with the same basis, we subtract their exponents, so we get x cubed. That would mean that I have three x's left here if I took one of those four x's out. And I had y squared, but I factored out the y squared. And so in its place, we're not going to put anything. Um, moving on to the next term, we say negative 16xy cubed is this term. Well, what if I took a negative 16 and divided by this positive 2 here? I'd get a negative 8. If I have x to the first, but I took one of these x's out, I don't have any x's left over. And if I had y cubed to begin with, but I took out two of those y's, then I'd be left with a single y here. And so what I want you to see is, and I'm going to clean this up a little bit here, I have 2xy squared, and I have 7x cubed minus 8y. You'll see that this is now a product of two factors. The first factor is 2xy squared, and it's a, a monomial factor, or GCF there. And then we get left with this other binomial, uh, binomial expression here this is our other factor. And you'll notice that there's nothing else that these two have in common. So you could really look at this as a product of primes. Both of these are primes. And that's what we were trying to do is rewrite this expression as a product of prime factors. So let's take a look at a couple of other instances really quickly here. I just want you to notice some things. So like letter B, one thing I noticed right off the bat, let me, let me fix this really quickly, is that it's not in standard form. And not that it has to be to factor it, but man, it's super, super expected and common to do that. So what we're going to do is, let's see if I can get my pen back here. I'm going to rewrite this as 28x squared minus 
7x plus 21. And that's just in an effort to write this so that my exponents go in decreasing or descending order, so greatest to least. I know looking at my coefficients, 28, 7, and 21 here, I know that I can take a 7 out of each of those. And in terms of, can they all give an x? Well, the first term has an x squared, two x's, right? Um, the second term has an x to the first, but this last term is a constant and has no x. So the biggest factor, the greatest factor I can take out of all these is a 7. And so we're going to go through and divide all these by 7. 28x squared divided by 7 is 4x squared. Negative 7x divided by 7. Well, negative 7 divided by positive 7 is a negative 1. So it kind of just leaves behind this negative 1x here. And then positive 21 divided by 7 is our 3. And again, here's my product of two factors. Okay, It doesn't have to be 2, but in this case we're looking at GCFs, and that's very common. Um, so we see that these are both prime. Now my last one here, this is going to be really quick, but I want you to notice that we've got 10x squared minus 19y plus 15. This certainly looks like a trinomial in standard form. But the thing is, when you scan these 10, 19, and 15, are all what we say are, are uh, 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 <laughs> relatively prime, okay? And that just basically means that they share no common factors with each other other than one. And I see that this has x is squared uh, on the first term, but none of the other terms have an x. My middle term has a y, but none of the other terms have a y. And my last term doesn't have any x's or y's. So what I'm going to write here is just simply that this is prime. And the way you could look at this is, since it's prime, I could factor out a 1, right? Its only factors are 1 and itself. And it would just, it would really look like this right here. So here are my, my two factors, 1 and itself in this product right here. So always scan for a GCF first whenever we're factoring.